All right, welcome back to uh, study time with me, Alex. We're going through the College Board Question Bank, one question at a time. Um, we are going to uh, dive right into linear equations in two variables today. Um, the linear equations with two variables is probably going to be giving us things like xy coordinates or maybe a variable within the expression and we got to solve for those. Remember our basic definitions from the previous videos. We want to make sure that we're looking for things like slope, y-intercepts, x-intercepts, uh, key phrases like perpendicular or infinite solutions or no solution. Those are key phrases that give us some definitions and I'll explain those along the way. Let's go ahead and dive in on question number one here. Uh, ending code is A45. So let's dive right in. We've got line K in slope-intercept form. It's perpendicular to line J. What is the slope? So perpendicular slopes have opposite reciprocal um, uh, coefficients of x. So in the formula y equals mx plus b, if it's perpendicular, the slope of the other function is 1 over m. So in this expression here, our slope is negative 17 over 3. Um, zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So negative 17 over 3 naturally is going to have um, an opposite reciprocal. Actually, this should have a minus in front because it's the opposite. So this is going to end up being negative 17 over 3 is our slope that exists, opposite reciprocal. Flip the sign becomes positive. 3 over 17 is the reciprocal, and that's our answer. Our music today is the YouTube channel. Uh, what is it? Cozy Coffee Shop. You can look them up. They're pretty awesome. All right. Lost my page here. Here we go. Question two. got a table, code ending C, F, C, 3, <clears throat> coordinates two points, line plane, they give us the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept, x equals what? By definition, at a y-intercept, x equals 0. So if k minus 5 is the x-intercept of our y-intercept, well, that means k minus 5 equals what? 0, of course. So k is 5. That's useful. We don't know. The question's not asking for what the value of k is. They want to know the value of b. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this table here and construct the equation and find the value of b, the y-intercept, by doing some slope shenanigans. So, plugging in 5, we get 5, comma, 13. And 5 plus 7 is 12, comma, negative 15. Change in y is negative 22, is it? Uh, no, it's bigger than that. Uh, easy way to do it is to add them together because that's how far away they are from 0. 13 plus 15 is 28. That's change in y divided by the change in x is 7. Negative change in y, positive change in x. Uh, so that divides out to be negative 4 is our slope. That's not our answer, that's our slope, remember. So negative 4x plus b, we want to find the value of b. Now to do that, we've got xy coordinate points. Remember, these right here are xy coordinate pairs. So we can pick one of those and plug it in. I'll choose the smaller numbers almost every time. So negative 4 times 5 plus b. And I'm writing b there because that's the standard form. y equals mx plus b. And b is what we're solving for. That's the y-intercept. Remember, they say in the question that this is the y-intercept. So negative 4 times 5 plus b equals the y-coordinate, negative 13, or pro positive 13, sorry. So negative 20 plus b equals 
equals 13, add the 20, we get 33 equals B. give us a standard form of a linear expression this time. I haven't seen too much standard form, but I imagine we're going to see quite a lot of it in this category. And here constants doesn't matter. It contains those points. Cool. So they're telling us that the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. What is the value of k? That's that value right there. In standard form, usually you'll see it written in a textbook or online like ax plus by equals c. We don't care about the slope, but I'll give you the definition anyway. The slope m is equal to negative a over b, and the y-intercept um, b usually is the symbol for this. Yeah, like, I'm not going to use b. Um, the y-intercept, because it's going to get confusing, y-intercept is c over b from this expression where we've got a, b, and c. So using that definition of the y-intercept, we know that the y-intercept is, the y-value is negative 3. So I know that 6, the value of c here, 6 divided by k is equal to negative 3. All I'm doing is using that definition, plugging in 6 for c, and k for b. So, doing the manipulation there, multiply the k, divide the negative 3, get the negative 2 equals k. So that's a. 4. We'll keep this video short. There are about 79, 80 questions to do in this category, so I'll be doing a whole bunch, but uh, we're going to take it casual. 683 is the ending code. Notice your answer choices. Whenever you have a uh, multiple choice question, it pays to glance at the answer choices first and notice the similarities and the differences. In these answer choices, we have a y value of 0 in every case. So even without reading the question, we should understand that that is asking us for an x-intercept and glancing up here, that is indeed what they are asking for. But we know that just by looking at the answers. So they gave us this table. We're going to read just to make sure that there's no shenanigans going on. Because what we could do here is we could use those coordinate points to set up a y equals mx plus b formula by plugging in a couple coordinate points to get the slope, like the change in y divided by the change in x, and then plugging them in to find the b value but it's rated a difficulty of three pips, and you always want to double check, have they shifted this left or right or up or down? And if we read through here, what do we see? Okay, is we yeah, translating h down five units. So we're gonna take our normal procedure, and we're gonna subtract five. That's what it means to translate down five units. Okay, so to find the slope, we do the change in y, that's 30. 130 to 160 is a change of 30. And the change in x, 18 to 23, is 5. So our slope, 30 divided by 5, is 6. So we got y equals 6x plus b minus 5, because we're translating it down 5 units, is why we have that minus 5 there. To find the value of b, we take a coordinate point, Always pick the smallest number and plug it in for x and y. 6 times 18 plus b minus 5 equals 130. Now it's just a matter of combining our like terms and simplifying. Let's do this multiplication first. Uh, 6 times 18, if you can't do it in your head, you are allowed to use a calculator. That's 60 plus 48 uh, is 108 plus b minus 5. 130, 103, 108 minus 5 is 103, add the b, subtract the 103 over, make sure we carry it out, subtract the 103 over and naturally we get 27 as our value of b. 
Uh, but we're still not done. We want the x intercept. So we've got y equals 6x plus 27. So to get the x intercept, we make y 0. 0 equals 6x plus 27. Subtract the 27 divided by 6. And we get, that should be 27, thank you. 27 over 6, they are reducible by a factor of 3. Um, so that would be negative 9 over 2, and that is the answer, B. That is very likely a question that they would use for the final questions on like module 2. That is, I would rate as a difficult, difficult question. Let's see, that was number 4. We'll do one more to keep this video short. Number 5. Code ending 2, 4, 4. We've got a standard form of a linear function here. 10x plus 15y. 85 hours of training courses. Okay, so the 85 corresponds to the total. So 10x and 15y must be the total number of hours in each course, x and y, I assume. But let's read. x is the number of on-site courses. y is the number of online courses. So they're probably going to ask us what the 10 or the 15 mean. How many more hours? Not how many hours, but how many more? So we're going to take the difference between something. Does each online training course take than each online? So if on line training courses are y, online is y, on site is x, and I want to know how much more, how many more hours are they? So the hours of x and the minus, or sorry, the other way around. Um, we want the uh, online minus the on-site, so online the hours for y minus the hours for x. And looking at our original equation, the hours must be this coefficient here, because if it's like 15 hours per course and 10 hours per course, that adds together to give you the total number of hours. So 15 minus 10 is, of course, 5. And that'll be the end of this sequence, starting slow. Let's go ahead and... Man, I keep... keeps not dragging for me. Zoom it. So we've got 13 over 7. They also accept the decimal form, of course. 33, code 026, and the answer A. 683, answer, ooh, uh-oh, I made a mistake. 683 says the answer should be D. Let's go ahead and evaluate that one. We'll check number 5 first real quick. Number 5 is 5. Okay, let's see what mistake I made for number 4. I bet it's just a calculation error. So, um, error. Uh, let's go ahead and do a different color here. So we're translating this thing down five units. Let's do that at the end. Y equals MX plus B again. The slope goes up 30 and goes a difference of five. So our slope is indeed six. Y equals six X plus B. We, oh, I bet that's where it was, the translation. You want to do it after you find the B value. Um, yeah, I don't want to translate it and then find the B value. Find the B value and then translate. I think that's probably going to be the issue. All right, so we plug in the 18 as before. We plug in the 130 for the Y value. 6 times 18, just double check my math here, 60 plus 48 is 108, yes. Um, oh, did I just completely forget to do the minus 5? Yeah, I just completely left that off over there. That'll do it.
So you add the 5 over. Yeah, let's skip ahead to here. Because uh, it lo does look like... Oh no, I did. I, I included it. Yeah, 108 minus 5 is 103. Yeah. And that's part of... Yes, yes, yes. That's what made the error. Okay, my original assumption. Okay. So su subtracting the 108, we get 22 this time. Uh, equals B. So we get Y equals 6X plus 22 minus 5. And you can see where it's going to go. Instead of up to 27, it's going to go down to 18. Y equals, or not 18, um, 17. 6X minus, or plus 17. And you can see that that is indeed going to be D. We make that 0, 6X plus 17. Subtract the 17, divide by the 6, and we do indeed get D. So in the order of operations there, you want to solve for your variables before you shift. I had forgotten that principle. So let's write it down. Verbalize your mistakes before moving on so that you avoid them. So uh, solve all variables before applying shift. All right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. If you think I made a mistake somewhere along the line, or if there's a better efficient way to do these, like graphing it in Desmos, or some easier way to get to an answer on these, please let me know in the comments below. If you learned something, give a, give a, a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'll be finishing up linear equations in two variables over the next week or so. Thanks for watching.